of Welcome Back. These are the guitar lessons with Louis Lee, and I am Louis Lee. Welcome to my neighborhood. I'm glad you've come back, and this has been exciting. Okay, so what we're going to work on today is a finger exercise. Always, we want to warm up first. So we're working on page 56, exercise 4. Okay, so we want to take a look at that. We want to set our metronomes. To 60 beats per minute. Okay, we have our metronome. Now, what I'm going to do is just demonstrate the proper technique to use and explain exactly what we're doing. So we're using the finger, the fourth finger, and we're playing quarter notes. A quarter note receives one beat and one full count. One beat, one count. Okay, so this is what we want. Three, four. And you're going to slide up to that F, back to that B. Slide up to that F, to the B. Now, I want you to be very conscious of this because sometimes I find my students, they play eighth notes. Eighth note gets one count but half of a beat, okay? Or one beat and half a count, I should say. Okay, so you get one beat and half a count. One, two, here's the eighth note. Three, four, half of a count. And, 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 and. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and quarter note. Okay, one beat, but a full count. So we're going to try that, okay? And also, again, we're sliding up because sometimes we have to really get out of our comfort zone when you're reading. Sometimes it's not always in the window of four frets, and you'll feel uncomfortable but from doing these exercises, it will not be uncomfortable because you'll be adapt to it. Okay, here we go. One, one, two, three, four.
and then we'll stop and stop. Okay, now very quickly, when you're practicing this exercise, it's very important to look at your fingers. Look at your right hand and your left hand so that you know which string you're plucking. And after you've done it for a while, it will become natural because, because when I'm practicing, sometimes we all make mistakes, but you want to minimize the mistakes. And if you're looking at your finger, now this exercise here is a bit of a stretch, but we've been doing this for a while and it's a challenge. But the point I'm trying to make is if you take your time, you will be able to feel exactly wherever, whichever finger is on that string, your right hand will follow it, okay? And that's something that comes naturally. So if you find yourself sometimes plucking the wrong string that your finger is not on, do not become frustrated because that's all part of the learning process and it will get better. That's why you practice. That's why they have this old analogy, practice makes perfect. So the more you do this, five or 10 minutes, we just did it for five minutes, but the objective is to do it for 10 minutes. The more you do it, you'll become acclimated and used to it, and you'll become a great guitarist. And I really appreciate what we've done this session and get ready for the next one, okay? Thank you so much. Guitar Lessons with Lewis Lee is brought to you by the Eubanks Conservatory of Music and Arts a 501c3 nonprofit corporation whose mission is to help parents teach cultural arts to their children at no cost and to encourage positive growth development, helping to reduce negative aspects of society in the lives of our youth. And welcome back, and this is the theory part of the guitar lessons with Louis Lee. And again, I am Louis Lee. Okay, great. Now, we're going to work on page 23. Now we're on the third string, the G string, Eddie A. Dynamite. Good, that G string, that good, G-O-O-D. So we're working on the G and the A, just two notes. So turn your book to page 23, and if you don't have it, as I said, you can get a copy of the page if you need it. You don't have to buy the whole book, but whatever is convenient, we'll give you the information at the end of the program. Thank you. Now, let's turn our metronomes on. Okay. And so the first note is G. So now we look at the first staff. We know a staff consists of five lines and four spaces. So the first staff with the treble. So we're going to play that U and I. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Rest. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we're going to go on. We're going to play it down straight, non stop. Because now you've become acclimated with reading because you've already done the E string and the B string. I just wanted to demonstrate that. And also the rest. That's a half, a whole rest. So, and count. Counting is important. That's your gauge. If you do not count, you can lose where you are. You want to be able to count so that your playing is in synchronization with your counting. Okay, here we go. So we're going to take the second step. One, two, three, four. 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 Rest two, three, four, one, two, rest, rest, one, two, three, four, 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 one, rest, 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 one, rest, three, four, one, rest, three, four, one, two, rest, 
rest. One, two, three, four. 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 One, rest. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Rest. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And stop. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, if you look at page 23, and just let me mention, in writing this book, if you notice, there were a few extra notes that were incorporated within the lesson. It was the uh, C note, the B, and the D note. And sometimes I might do that, and I've done it, you see, um, when I was writing the book, just to think, just to trick you, because that was the previous lesson. So I noticed that when I was reading, because I'm reading this. I didn't know it was coming up. I, I might have written the book, but I just hadn't read it. I, I just this isn't something I do every day. But I noticed that coming up, and I had to play that D, and then went to that B and that C. So I just wanted to mention that because you may think, that's not part of the G string. No, it's not. But it's in the music, and you want to read the music. So that's why I put that in there. Now, if you look at the next page, 24, this is learning also. And we're not going to go through all of it, but we're going to look at uh, the staff 45. Remember the staffs are numbered. So we're just going to do that real quick. 45 and we're going to do 53 and then we're going to stop. And I'm going to make some comments about that and then we're going to conclude this. Ready? Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and stop. Now, the reason why I wanted us to just look at that and I jumped down to 45 and 53 is because we're using quarter rest. And a rest is very important because it's a period of silence where it's equivalent to whatever note it's equivalent uh, in the chart. In other words, a whole note receives four counts in one beat. You get one beat and four counts. So a whole rest would receive no beats but still four counts. A half a note would receive one beat and two counts. So a half a rest would receive no beats and two counts. And a quarter note receives one beat and one count. A quarter rest, no beats and no counts. One beat or no beats, but one rest, one count for rest. So that means it's a period of silence. And that's important. So that's why I wanted to just jump down because on the rest of the previous ones, we have a half and a whole rest, but we haven't done the quarter rest. Now, if you're not familiarized or you need to familiarize yourself with this, turn the page. I think it's on page 12, 
exactly. Let me look in very quickly. Oh, yeah, turn to page 9 and 10, and you can refresh your, your memory uh, of the rest. It says, the rest indicates a silence of an equivalent duration. So in other words, equivalent duration. So just study that chart. It's table 14 on page 8, because sometimes you might forget. But one thing you do want to keep in mind, every note gets one beat. It's the count that differs, and the count is how long you sustain that note, okay? So thank you so much for this lesson. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Stay tuned. Keep coming back, and that concludes the theory part of the lesson. Guitar Lessons with Lewis Lee is brought to you by the Eubanks Conservatory of Music and Arts, a 501c3 nonprofit corporation whose mission is to help parents teach cultural arts to their children at no cost and to encourage positive growth development, helping to reduce negative aspects of society in the lives of our youth. And welcome back to Guitar Lessons with Lewis Lee. And again, I am Lewis Lee. Great. Now, we're going to work on the fun part. What is the fun part? The song that we're working on is Little Saint Nick. One of my students that I'm teaching right now uh, is working on his Christmas material because he said, Lewis, I want to have a lot. I said, fine. So he's working on Little Saint Nick. So I just thought it would be good just to incorporate this. We, we did it on the last lesson. But there's some chords that we need to review, okay? So what we want to do is set our metronome, remember 60 beats per minute, and we're gonna look at the first chord. Remember, if you do not have the chart, I'm just gonna show you real quick. If you do not have the chart, at the end of the program, we will tell you how to obtain all the information, okay? Uh, so that you can go online and just download it, okay? Not the book, but the lesson. The lesson is complimentary, okay? Because we want you to succeed, you see? So don't worry about if you don't have the book. It is good to have the book. There's a lot of good information. There's a glossary, uh, tons of stuff. But if you cannot afford it, don't worry about it because all of this lesson is complimentary. We want you to learn and be able to grow. Okay, great. Now, having said that, the first chord is the G chord. So I'm going to play the G chord, and then I'm going to count. I'm going to play it one measure. A measure consists of four beats. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Now, let's look at the next chord. The next chord is a C over E. Sometimes when guitar players see that slash, they become confused. No. What does that mean? It means it's the E chord with the C in the bass. Whatever you see first, that is what's in the bass, and the one that's under the slash is the chord itself. So it sounds like this. Ready? One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Now I threw the A in there this time. Three, four. Let me leave. Now you notice how I'm not looking, but I can A, just the E, three, four, two, three, four. Now, because I wanted to demonstrate something. Okay, that chord means exclude that A, and the E is what you're playing. One, two, three, four, two, three. Four. But if we look at, that is also the same as A minor, which is the third time, the second time I had played it, three, watch with A. Now that A is in the bass, because now it becomes A minor. But if you exclude that A, it's a C with the E in the bass, an E chord with a C in the bass. It's an E chord with a C in the bass, okay. Now, just so that you're not confused, because you'll see these two chords, and they look alike, they almost sound alike, but one note makes a big difference, especially when you're playing it. You want to be conscious of that, okay? Now, the next chord is another tricky chord. That's a G slash D. Now, what does that mean? Exactly. It's a D chord with a G in the bass, and it's planted here. And you can use either finger. It doesn't matter, but try to line it up. Remember, the frets, they line up respectively. One, two, three, four. Use your third finger. So it sounds like this. One, two, three. Four, two, 
three, four. Now why is that a G chord, a D chord, G chord with the G in the bass? Because it's a G and what's in the bass? You have that D in there, Eddie A Dynamite. Now here's a G chord, a full G chord with no D in the bass. A G chord with no D in the bass. But this is a G chord with the D in the bass. Hear the difference? Four, two, four. Let's look at the D7 chord. Two, three, four, two. That's a pretty chord. Back to that G major chord. Now here comes a tricky one. And then the G6. That G6. Now that G6 has that E in the bass. It's not E in the bass, but the E is in the melody. Now what does that mean when you say a G6? That's theory, but we want to just cover that very quickly. It's a G6. Here's a G7, two, three, four. This is a regular G chord, okay? G major. Major seven. A G7. That has a minor seven. Here's a G6. Two. So that's a pretty good line. Play with these chords because that could become a song. Because it's called, um, in theory, it's called contrary motion, where the theme is moving. Two, listen, three, four. Two, four. Two. Same chord, here has it, two, four, two. Very thematic, two. There's a theme, and that's the word we use, a theme, meaning what is being portrayed. And that line is, it's a moving line, a melody line. Okay, four and then stop. Now the next chord is that the G sharp diminish. Now this is in theory, but a diminish means to subtract, to diminish, to lessen, to move back, to diminish. So what is diminished in that chord? In any chord, the only key note or number that is diminished is the fifth. No other number, the seventh is not diminished. The six is not diminished because if it goes back, it's a minor. But theoretically, the fifth cannot be a minor because it's a dominant note. And we'll get into that pretty soon in the other theory classes. Why is it a dominant note? And I'll just say very quickly because the fifth is similar to the one, okay? The Ionian, is, and, and the fifth is a Mixolydian, okay? The Ionian and the Mixolydian, the fifth. But the only difference in the major and the dominant seventh is one has a minor seventh, the other one has a major seventh. Okay, so that's very important. Nothing else changes. So, in the diminished chord, the G sharp, okay, the G sharp, you're up on the third fret, it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're going to stop it there. We're almost about to run out of time. When you're having fun, time always goes by really, really fast. And that was really fast. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. That concludes this part of the lesson of the fun part. Stay tuned. And for our next lesson that will come up, 21, be safe and always put God first. Thank you so much. 
If you would like to purchase a copy of the Eubanks Guitar Pedagogy Course Instruction Book used by Lewis Lee in this video, just contact us at lewis-lee at the-ecma.com or mail a request to Post Office Box 1175, Hawthorne, California, 90251, or call 424-350-7027. And remember, all donations are fully tax-deductible.